Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Catherine. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Muse and, in specific, how startups get off the ground. So I think people often like to uh, hear these sort of myth or creation stories of how startups get born. And I want to take you a little bit behind the scenes uh, of one startup. So to give you context, uh, my company is called The Muse. And we help about one million people a month figure out what they want to do with their life and then how to get there. We also help companies hire through these photo video profiles, and we're pretty regularly featured as career experts um, in CNBC, The Today Show, et cetera. But it wasn't always like that. Um, and if you asked me uh, for the sort of creation story of the muse, and I was maybe speaking to the press or trying to give you a very nice, quick answer, it might go something like this. I'd probably start with myself, uh, age three years old, wanting to be a fireman. My grandfather was a fireman, and I thought this was sort of the ultimate pinnacle of career success. You could save people, you got to play with dogs, what was, more was there in life? And as I got older, I started to really think about other options, uh, doctor, lawyer, engineer, the classic choices. Um, but really, I was still left with this question, what do I want to do with my life, and how do I figure that out? And I spent a lot of time on job boards, I would type in careers I thought I might be interested in and get 5,000 results, and every single result looked the same as the last. Uh, and you know, paging through uh, hundreds of job listings that were text-based, that really didn't provide any color or culture uh, or fit information was really, really frustrating. This is another one that looks exactly the same as the one before. And so I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if there was a site where you could see inside companies and get a real story, cut a little window in their walls and understand what it was like to work there? And the idea sprung fully formed out of my head like Athena from Zeus. Unfortunately, that's rarely how it happens in the startup world. The real story is a little more like this. My personal story started with uh, a good amount of failure. I call it an evolution to awesome, but it's probably more accurate to say a journey from suck to suck less. So this was the very first thing that we ever put online for the Muse. Uh, this was in the late summer of 2011, and it was a splash page. We actually had no idea what the site was going to look like when we put this up, but we wanted to start capturing uh, email addresses of people who visited and at least have something somewhere on the internet to point people to. We also knew we had a chicken and egg problem in the career space, because you can't get companies to pay to post jobs if you don't have any users, but it's really hard to attract users if you don't have any jobs. So we decided to start uh, with content, career content more specifically. So this is the first thing we launched in September of 2011. We called it The Daily Muse, and we featured articles on everything from negotiation to management to work-life balance, um, and it started to work pretty well. We had 20,000 people visit in the first month, primarily coming through uh, social media channels, word of mouth. We started to do a little bit of content syndication where we'd give job search articles to Forbes and other sites in exchange for them linking back to us in the article. So someone would see an article they liked uh, on acing an interview and find their way back to us. We then started testing jobs. We had uh, 20,000 people in our first month, 26,000 in the second month, and 70,000 in the third. So we knew something was working. We wanted to test. And this is the very first job we ever posted on the site. It's pretty ugly. Um, and it was for a company called Uber, at the time a very small startup, now a, a massive business, um, that was looking for a general manager. So we heard back from people, you know, we love that you're posting jobs. We like that the description is fun and engaging and tries to tell us a little more. But at the end of the day, it's still text. It's nothing special. And we thought to ourselves, you know, what can we do with photo and video to make this more engaging? Well, then something happened that could have been very bad for us, which is that we got funding. In fact, we were accepted into Y Combinator, one of the most prestigious incubators. And with this came a couple hundred thousand dollars and our idea that we could tackle the entire problem at once. So in January 2012, we arrive in Silicon Valley and we think, now's our chance to crack the career space wide open with this gorgeous product. Now you'll see there's seven different, this is the actual mock-up from what we were going to build in January. There's seven different features going on. We were going to integrate with social, show you which companies, people who worked at the company you're interested in were before or after that particular role, do all sorts of data visualization. It was going to be amazing, but it was also incredibly complicated. And we had our first meeting with Paul Graham, who's one of the startup gurus there. We had a little bit of a come to Jesus moment where he said, look, you can build this, but it's going to take you six months and you'll be dead by the time it gets out. You need to pick something that sort of encapsulates the vision of your company and just fucking launch already. So we took his advice. Uh, we pulled an all-nighter, and we came up with this mock-up, which really slimmed down everything we wanted to do to the first core point, which was photos and videos that took you inside a company. It was something we could build ourselves in only a couple of days and launch very quickly with only a few companies on the platform. And 13 days later, we were live on TechCrunch getting feedback 
with, again, a relatively kind of janky version of our first version. Um, we did a couple of things then to maximize feedback. So we tracked data like it was our job, which, if you are a startup founder, it is. We used tools like Mixpanel and Crazy Egg to see where people were moving on the site, what they were clicking on, what attracted them, and we asked for a lot of feedback. So we asked companies, do you want to pay to post jobs on our site? We asked users, what do you like, what do you not like? We had 100 companies sign up in 24 hours. We thought maybe we were on to something. I'm sorry, this is what that page looks like now, so not so ugly. We also watched for growth. So what is it that you're doing that are causing people to share with their friends, and what is it that's leaving them flat? And if you know that people are starting to share this through social, through email, through other channels, you can get a pretty good sense that maybe, in fact, you're onto something. And then you've just got to iterate, iterate, iterate. So in my last one minute and 17 seconds, I'm going to cover the five things quickly that we learned, starting with your college roommate approval is not market demand. I think people often come up with an idea, and they tell it to their mom, or they tell it to their best friend, and the person says, I love you, that's brilliant, you're such a great person. And that's great, but that person loves you. Ultimately, to understand if your idea is going to succeed in the market, you need the feedback of people who don't know you, who don't care about you, and ideally, you're not even particularly nice, which is why I think you need to just fucking launch already. Otherwise known nicely as start somewhere. Startups are like go, so you can't, uh, you can't win, you can't get anywhere if you don't uh, just have the courage to sort of let go of your idea and put it in the open marketplace. Um, secondly, test everything, but make sure you're focusing on the right things. For example, we have videos on the Muse, and people weren't watching them quite as often as we liked, so we spent weeks as a team figuring out, if we change the text here on the playhead, will more people watch the videos? If we make it bigger, if we make it smaller? But ultimately, getting people to watch videos is not a core point of our product. Getting them to apply to jobs, to share it with their friends, that's what we're about. So if watching more videos means people are more likely to apply to jobs, that's great. But otherwise, it's not something that we wanted to spend time on. Um, I'll go very quickly here. Create velocity. You often have an idea that if they build it, they will come. Unless you're in the field of dreams, unfortunately, that doesn't work out very well. So a lot of times, as a startup, you know, you've got no money. You've got to figure out uh, by blogging for other sites, getting people to share on social media, writing op-eds for larger sites, and then sneakily getting them to include a link to your product. How do you make sure that enough people are actually watching what you do so that, in fact, you get the data you need to keep iterating? Finding an amazing team. This is the team at The Muse, and all of these people could have uh, gotten much, much higher salaries by working elsewhere. Uh, it's incredibly sort of humbling and a big responsibility as a startup CEO. But ultimately, you need to think about what is it that's attracting people to work at your company. Usually, it's the vision, the work they're going to be doing, the people they're going to be working with, and the environment. And then lastly, don't believe the hype. Uh, it can seem often that everyone else is getting funded by the biggest people, that they're being featured on the biggest blogs. When we first started raising funding, I pitched 148 people, uh, sorry, 150 people, and 148 said no. And people ask, how do you keep going? But ultimately, if you're seeing your users go from 300 to 3,000 to 300,000 to 3 million, you know they're on the right track, and you can, uh, you can ignore the hype. Thank you very much.